Hey there everyone, Atesh here, back again with another video and welcome to the series on React Native. I hope you are enjoying this series. So we are about to build our next app and by the way, in case you are not yet aware of it, uh, just go ahead on to GitHub repository that we are pulling up for all of this series. It's absolutely freely available, React Native projects. And you can see we have built quite a lot of projects. The eighth one was Spotify Music app, which was pretty fun to understand that how memory works, how it is being loaded, how we can create a service and all of that. We also have these contribution where you can write simply an article on Hashnode and can submit it as an open source contribution that, hey, we are helping other people to learn from our journey. In this video, we are building our ninth app, but I would call this as technically this is ninth app, but this should be like 9.1 because there is going to be a 9.2 as well. Now, sometimes what I've realized over the year while teaching millions of students is sometimes while building an app, you learn the concept on the go, but sometimes the concept is a little bit crucial, little bit important. So you first prepare a dummy app for that coming up app. You learn the concept in that and then you get a revision in the next app. So it's much more easier for you to understand. So this app, I'm not going to show you what we are going to create because it's going to have just few buttons, one screen and second screen, that's it. So the concept of creating multiple screen is going to be covered up. Also, how we can navigate from one screen to another screen. Let me give you a food for thought. Sometimes you go ahead and uh, like not sometimes, many times you buy things from Amazon. Have you tried to log in into Amazon? Once you log in into Amazon and you try to surf through variety of products, no matter how many times you press the back key, you never ever visit the login page once you log them out, log, log it in. Once you are logged out, then only that login screen is placed in front of you and you are not able to see any other things. So we as a developer have to make sure that no matter how many times you press the back key, you are actually going on to just the home page, not onto the screen where we don't want you to go. This all comes through the navigation or the routing of the apps. And routing is a little bit more complex uh, in case of mobile devices compared to the web. Web, it's really simple because we are so much used to of the browser apps, it's different. So in this video, I'll walk you through some of the documentation. We'll show you some of the study materials that you can study on your own. You can write articles about it on Hashnode. That will be super, super amazing. By the way, this entire series is sponsored by Hashnode. A big shout out and thanks to them. So we are going to do exactly that. The package that we are going to use is React Navigation. Very thoughtfully named. And this is one of the most amazing project which is being used. Uh, you can see on the GitHub, it's available for freely. Very active. They have a lot of repository people involved, a lot of community sponsors heavy, heavy project itself. This is a project which is doing a lot of heavy lifting in almost all of the React apps that you see all around. And sometimes you don't even realize you are using a React Native app. Now, you can see this is a React Navigation. It's available for routing and navigation in Expo and React Native apps. We have been working with the React Native apps, the best way of working with the React Native. Expo is fun, it's easy, but in the production, when you'll be working in the companies, you'll be using this way. That's why we have been building a series on that. You can see it's a component built for iOS and Android, easy to use and blah, blah. We are interested in going into the docs section. Now in the docs section, there are a couple of things that you should really read and study about it. So this is the fundamental of what you should know. Uh, although they said you need to know React, Native Express and all of that, you don't need that much. I'll cover that all of that in this particular video itself. So not going to be uh, much. Now, a uh, couple of guides that I want to actually give it to you, a couple of reading materials, then I'll show you this. Uh, first is uh, Navigation Lifecycle. Uh, this is the one that you should read. And this is the paragraph. We are going to read it together because it's interesting and you should know about it. So forget about previous section, whatever that was. We work with the Stack Navigator, which is a type. So there are, let's just say, there are two screens. One is Home screen and one is Detail screen. Uh, there are two challenges in front of us. First is moving from one screen to another screen. Second is uh, to take data from one screen to another screen. These are two challenges. And the third one obviously is that how we should mount that screen. Should we able to be able to go back or should we able to go back, let's just say you're three or four screen long, how we can go back onto home screen in one press or how long should we be allowed to go back? That is the challenge. You maybe don't want to go some users on the login page again. So these are the challenges with us. So we know that we can simply use navigation.navigate and whatever the route name that we want to have, we can simply go with that. And uh, there is an important question about the context that what happens when you move from home to detail, what happens with home when we navigate away from it? Uh, when we come back to it, how does a route found that the user is leaving to it? So obviously, uh, if you are coming from a React navigation, 
uh, you may you may assume that when a user navigate from A to B, notice this carefully, A will unmount and something like component will unmount will call. Now this is almost exactly like that same kind of a thing happens here as well, but there is a lot more involvement of the things here as well. So this is almost like this. So whenever you actually use navigation in the mobile devices, you try to actually go something like this. So let's just say there are a couple of screens. Uh, let's just say this is your one screen and then you have this is another screen and this is another screen. I'm keeping them all different sizes so that you know that this is A, this is B and this is C. So let's just say we have a simple A as a screen. Then we have this uh, B as a screen and then we have this uh, C as a screen. All right. Now, although there is a lot that happens, but the best way that I have realized to understand that how this navigation actually works is to assume that there is an array that is coming up. Now in this array, first you visited the A screen, then you visited the B screen and then you might want to visit the B C screen. So try to keep in mind that this is how it is happening. Now all the method that you are going to see, there are a lot of methods to navigate from one screen to another screen, always assume that they, you are actually pushing something into it or you are moving away from it. For example, when I say navigate from B to C and then you navigate from C to A, then in most cases what is going to happen, another layer is pushed into it that is A. So if the option is available to you to go back, then probably A will get away from the memory but you are going to go into the C. That is the common thing. Now since this all thing happens in the navigation, like you keep on loading the things and loading those things, try to assume this is a stack. Okay. Now the next thing that I'm about to show you will make absolutely all things clear. Just assume this is a stack in which you can keep on adding the screen, but you can flush them all out and all of this thing. For these things, you have to actually go into uh, the API reference. Uh, let me just find it. And there are links. Yep, there is a link. Uh, not, not the links, actions actually. And uh, let me just see. Common actions. It's sometimes difficult to find what I'm looking for. So just bear with me. Uh, stack actions. Yep, this is the one I was looking forward. So as I told you, the stack is the way how you actually navigate through the screens. So stack action is an object containing methods for generating actions specified to stack best a navigator. So what happens is it's saying that, hey, every screen is a stack on top of each other. And if you want to navigate from it or you want to perform any action, there are things available to you. First is replace. What replace does? it actually replaces everything. So if you have one screen, you want to just totally remove it from the stack and put another screen so, so that no matter what user press, how many times it presses the back, it never moves to this screen because this is removed from the stack. That's where you use the replace. And that's what you see in the Amazon screen as well, that once you logged in, it is being, the home screen is actually replacing the login screen so that no matter how many times you press back, you never go back. So Moving into the screen is super simple. You just say stack replace. I'll show you all of that in the code as well. This is the screen which you want to replace from and this is the object we are taking with ourselves, the data that we are taking. Pretty simple. Similarly, if you'll see that we have a push as well. And as you can see stack, we are pushing, keep on pushing the stack. Some people don't read this documentation and whenever they want to move to another screen, they keep on pushing the stacks on top of each other. That is why they are learning just from the tutorials, not from the docs. And what they do at the end of the day is make your app horrible experience. And then at the end of the day, you blame React Native that it didn't perform well. You're just keep on pushing the things. Sometimes you need to replace that instead. So the push action adds a route on top of the stack and navigates forward to it. Uh, this differs from navigate uh, will pop back to earlier in the stack if the router given is already present. So basically it's saying exactly the same. The push will always add on top so that router can uh, route can be present multiple times. So you get the idea. Now we have pop as well. Maybe you want to remove the screen. So it's a stack. So push and pop needs to be there. A classic data structure example. So you can pop. The good thing is that in the pop, you can pass on as many parameters as you wish. You want to pop one screen off. I told you this is the array that we have. So how many screens you want to pop off? Uh, maybe you want to pop off one screen, maybe you want to pop off two screen, three screen, how, how much you want, you can actually go ahead and push that, pop that. No, you cannot use negative numbers. And then it is pop to top. So obviously one screen is going to be something which is home screen or the main screen that you want to use. And you want to provide a user the ability that, hey, no matter where you are or how much long into your stack, I'll remove everything and you will be moved on to the home screen or the main screen. And this is the method that you should be using, which is pop to top. So now you know that why there are so many methods. I see online so many questions that why there are so many methods. We can just use navigate.navigation.navigate 
or we can just use replace or push why there's so much option it depends on the use case so now the app that we'll be building will be focusing on how we can actually use the dispatch and can move on to the next screen but also can take some of the data with us onto the second screen this will help us to build the next app uh, which is going to be much more detailed will take so much of the data much more beautiful as well this one is going to be definitely an ugly app but this will give you a lot of concept a ah, lot of theory but this was all an important theory that is 100 percent needed for you to move into the world of mobile application development so again go ahead and write this entire experience onto a hash node article and i would be super happy if you share it with me on linkedin instagram discord wherever you like i would be super happy to catch you up in the next video